A2033. It's uh, Dr. Wilderman again. And today I want to talk to you about the editing process. So um, we have several mantras here in JMC 2033. And the mantra for editing is that clear writing begins with clear thinking. So in order to edit well, you've got to really get yourself in a clear headed space. Um, and what that means is really understanding the editing process. So editing is one part of the overall writing process and it's incredibly, and it's an incredibly important part, right? Everything that we've talked about with accuracy, um, editing is so important to that. And what I want you to know about today are two different types of editing, both equally important. So one type of editing, we'll call it macro editing. Also, you could refer to it as big picture editing, right? So the bigger scope of your writing project. When you're focusing on editing in a macro or big picture capacity, you are focusing on things like, does the story make sense, right? Is it based on facts? Is, are those facts well attributed? Um, is there ap adequate background information to give a context for the reader? Is it fair and balanced, right? If there's many sides to the story, is it representing more than just one side? Um, does the flow of the piece work? Is it easy to follow and easy to understand? And is there anything missing? right? Anything that's not in the story that would really help the reader get the full picture or understand better. Those are macro editing issues when you're reading a piece to look at the full big picture. Okay, then the other type of editing you might have guessed is called micro editing or small picture editing. And again, they're equally important. Um, micro editing, uh, you might hear it called proofreading as well, um, or copy editing. It looks at smaller issues and potential mistakes. So you're looking at grammar and punctuation. You're looking at consistency across the piece, right? Is, um, the name of the business? Is it spelled the same way every time? Is a source's name, you know, spelled the same way every time? Um, you're looking for consistency and style, uh, a style for the wording choices that you use as well. Um, you're looking for punctuation issues. You're looking for matters of um, AP style or other style, depending on what type of media work you're writing on. Um, you're looking for spelling issues. So so you're looking for all the little all the little mistakes that we might have made and checking for consistency and accuracy. Um, now these two types of editing, macro and micro, big picture and small picture, they kind of require your brain to work a little bit differently. And that's why we really recommend that you don't ever try to do those two types of editing in the same way. Um, there's also a very important rule when it comes to micro editing. Uh, you might call it a cardinal, a cardinal rule, and that is look everything up, right? Um, yes, there, there, if you've been editing and writing for a long time, um, there are certain things that I know haven't changed in the AP style book or in grammar, and I know them for sure. Um, but man, there are other times that there's just certain punctuation rules, certain AP style rules, certain spellings, right? We all have those words here and there that we just uh, question ourselves on. They don't stick in our mind. Look everything up. And if you have even the tiniest bit of doubt or question, look everything up, the spelling, the punctuation. Um, that is going to help you um, be more accurate and, and more professional in your media work. Now, all media writers, right, journalists, um, PR writers, advertising copywriters, um, if you're writing a book, if you're writing a film script, um, all media writers are called upon uh, to be their own editors sometimes. Um, it's never a good idea for you to be the only editor on your work. You should never be the only editor on your work. Um, I'm going to say sometimes in the fast-paced profession, I know this happens, but it is not ideal. However, 
being one of the editors on your work is, is, a, good, is a good idea. That's fine. So what I'm going to share with you now, let me share my screen. We have 10 tips for editing. All right. So if you're doing editing on your own writing project or you are editing for someone else, all of these tips are very solid. Okay. Now, first one is write first, edit later. If you're trying to write and edit at the same time, you're going to slow down your creative process and you're going to get all kind of like, um, you're going to get all stumped on, on something that's minor rather than just getting your first draft down on the screen or on the page, right? So do the writing first without worrying about the mistakes you might be making. Write first, get it all on the paper, get that first draft out there, edit later. Keep those two things separate. They are two separate pieces of the writing process. Number two, when you get that first draft done, don't immediately start editing. If you, if time allows, put it aside for a bit before you edit. It That could be a few minutes or ideally a bit longer than that. You know, go do something else. Uh, for a second, um, you know, play a quick game on your phone or something like that, something to clear your head um, and then come back to edit after you have taken a break from it. You'll be amazed at how much better you will be at catching mistakes if you don't immediately start the editing process. Um, this could be a good reason to let somebody else edit it first and then you're the person who takes a second look. Number three, Edit on paper if possible. It's going to be possible in the 2033 classes to edit on paper. Now, you might see that as a waste or old fashioned, but I just want you to try it. Okay. I want you to try it rather than always editing on a computer screen or another type of screen. Print out your work um, or your peers' work, whoever's work you're looking at, print it out and put pencil to paper and see how your editing skills are when you do it that way. There's just something a little bit different. Now, some jobs require you to specifically edit on screen. I am not saying that's not a valuable skill, it is. But see how editing on paper works for you. All right, tip number four, read aloud as part of your editing process. Now that doesn't matter if you're editing on paper, editing on screen, read aloud as part of the editing process, especially for pieces that are gonna be for uh, broadcast TV or radio, something that's gonna be presented um, in, an, in audio or video. But even for print or online publications where people are gonna be reading it um, and not listening to it, it's still so good to read aloud as part of your editing process. It slows your brain down. It slows your brain down. It makes you focus on the cadence and the rhythm and it'll help you catch mistakes, but it will also help you catch things that aren't necessarily mistakes, but like maybe sentences that go on for too long, too many short sentences in a row. It's gonna help you with the flow of the piece. Number five, this tip I think is wildly important. Keep macro and micro editing separate. Do a round that is for macro big pictures. Then do another round that is for micro small picture issues, right? So edit the edit the first time for big picture issues. Does it make sense? Is, uh, is everything in the right order? Did I get the attributions right? But then take a second round of editing to look for those small punctuation, grammar, spelling mistakes. Those are two different types of editing, your brain working in two different ways. Um, number six tips for editing, always look for what you can cut, all right? You're, even if you've edited um, well and you think that you've really paid attention to writing concisely and tightly, there's probably still a little bit that you can cut, right? The best editors can take even a tight piece of writing and make it just a little bit tighter. Um, number seven, fact check numerous times, especially proper nouns, right? Remember, fact checking of proper nouns, um, people's names, right? The things that, things that we capitalize, um, uh, people's names, names of businesses, states, um, Again, just look out for those capitalized words, okay? Make sure those are spelled and punctuated correctly. All right, those are the types of mistakes that really get us in trouble, 
all right? People hate it when their names are spelled wrong. Um, but not just that, it can seriously get you into legal or ethical issues in certain situations. Fact check, especially those proper nouns. All right, then uh, tip eight, when you think the piece of writing is perfect, read it one more time and read it slowly, all right? You can do that quietly, you can do that out loud, but do it slower than you normally would. All right, tip number nine is gonna sound a little weird to some of you. So aside from just reading it slowly, one way to even slow it down more is to read it backward. And I don't mean, I don't mean backwards as in every single word backwards. I mean, take the last sentence, the last paragraph, the last sentence of the last paragraph, read that sentence first. Okay, so still read the sentences in the right order, but, um, but start at the end and work your way back up. What that helps you do is not, it's a, it's a more micro technique. It helps you not worry about big picture issues. It helps you um, not accidentally skip over mistakes you might've made because we get so used to the front, the flow of the reading if we read it from the way it's intended to be read from beginning to end. So if you read it from end to beginning, it's again, your brain just working in a slightly different way. All right, and then number 10, very, very important. Whenever possible, and you should always make this effort, don't be the only editor on your own work. Everybody needs an outside editor, everybody. Even people who are great at this. Um, I have been teaching media writing since 2004. Um, it's a strength. It's a skill, but I am never my own editor, um, especially for a project that's going to go out there into the world, right? For a magazine story I might be writing, for a research uh, paper that I might be submitting, I'm never going to be my own editor, no matter how confident I am with my skills. It's so easy to read over your own work and read it correctly, even though there's a mistake in the writing. All right, you're going to be, um, someone else is going to be better at catching mistakes in your own work than you are. It's not as familiar to them, and therefore they might see something that you don't. So, all right. Okay, then the last thing that I want to end on for editing is um, you're going to be using your working with words text when you do your first editing assignment. And at the very back of the text, there are these copy editing marks, and they are going to be incredibly useful to you all semester long. You're going to need to learn them. OK, um, copy editing marks are like a language shared between media professionals. They, it's a shortcut. They let us know what we need to correct in our writing. Um, the Working With Words book has a set of copy editing marks. A few weeks later, we're going to look at the AP style book. It also has a set of copy editing marks. Most of them are the same between the two books. There's a couple that are different between the two books. Um, for your first editing assignment, make sure to use the Working With Words copy editing marks. And when you work on the AP assignment, make sure to use the AP copy editing marks. Again, most of them are the same. Just a tiny, that two or three are different. You could also talk to your individual instructor and ask them if they have a preference um, on the couple of editing marks that are different. My guess is no, they'll be okay with you using either one. Um, but again, just take a look. Take a look at the working with words. Take a look at the AP style editing marks. Note the two or three, uh, the two or three marks that are different, and understand that they're both well known and accepted across media writing. So you're fine, uh, but it could be that one of your instructors has a specific preference. So you know, just ask them about it. All right, um, I think that's all I want to say about editing, and. Um, Editing is a widely valued skill in the media profession. So if you are good at it, you will be valued for that work. Um, all right, have a good week. Um, good luck on the editing assignment and I will see you in another lecture.